The following is a tutorial on the scripting interface in OpenCL Studio. Now this tutorial is a prerequisite for all the remaining tutorials uh, about uh, OpenGL rendering, uh, OpenCL programming, user interface design and so forth. Now the, the scripting interface here is quite unique in the way that it allows you to uh, address the scripts and handle the events. And the best way to, to illustrate this is to start with an example. So I will now go to the uh, GUI subtree here in the tree view and via right mouse click, I will insert a slider. Now the slider appears on the screen. And just like any other node here in the tree view, this slider is an object in the programming sense. This means that it publishes an API and that it generates events. And the way to access this object is via a construct we call a script processor here under the script tab. Now a script processor consists basically of 32 registers here on top of the screen. And you can drag and drop any node from the tree view into any one of these registers. And after you've done so, you can see here on the right hand side a list of all the events that this particular object generates. And once you select one, you can now in here implement a event handler in Lua script. So let's go ahead now and print out the value of the slider as we're moving it. I've already have the on move event handler selected in here, and now all I have to do is write the, the proper piece of code here. Now, every event handler implicitly, implicitly publishes a variable called event, and that variable references the object that has generated the event. So if I type an event colon up pops a code completion window that shows me the interface of this object, in this case the slider, and there's a function called get position. All I have to do now is wrap this uh, call into a print statement and compile the script. Now you can compile the script by either hitting Control Q on the keyboard or you can go up here to uh, and hit the right uh, button on the top right side of the screen. So now let me start the application, hit and play up here, go back to our scene view and when I move the slider you can see the values are being printed down here in the output pane. Now I could have also accessed that slider in a different manner by building an identifier that consists of the path to the slider in the tree view. So in this case, the slider is under the GUI node. So I go GUI dot slider and then hit colon and I'm accessing the slider object again. Now note how I ch what the difference here between the dot and the colon. If you type in a dot, you are you're listing the children of that node in the tree view. If you hit a colon, you're accessing the API of that object. Now within an event handler, you can access uh, any one of the objects in the tree view. On top of that, you can also access a, a number of Lua packages. Now there is intrinsic packages such as uh, math. And for packages, you have to hit a dot to access the API. And here you can see the Lua math package. It has a number of functions. Uh, there is no there's no description here in the code completion window because these packages are intrinsic to Lua that come with the Lua scripting language. And there, there is a few additional ones. And then there's also the extension modules that come with OpenCL Studio. So for example, there is the GL module. This one uh, wraps the OpenGL 4.2 API. There is also an XML module. This one allows you to read and write XML files and there's a number of other ones. Now the extension modules are distributed with OpenCL Studio. This means that their source code as well as the Visual Studio project to build them is lo are located in the current workspace directory. So if you'd like to do any changes to them, all you have to do is recompile the corresponding DLL and the next time OpenCL Studio starts up, your changes will be loaded into the editor. Of course, you can also add your own extension modules. And there is a tutorial uh, that will explain exactly how to uh, extend OpenCL Studio via the Lua plugin architecture. So I will leave that topic uh, alone for now. Now, before I go on, I'd quickly like to talk about the help tab over here. And this one shows you an interactive uh, source browser for all of the uh, objects and extension modules in OpenCL Studio. And all you have to do is select the objects here and you can see all the functions and then the code description over here. Now, there is the objects that you can put in the, in the tree view. There is a number of intrinsic modules. 
and then here it is to plugin modules and if you create your own extensions they will show up here under this tab and there is also the um, libcl parallel algorithms library which is yet another way to extend opencl studio and there's also a dedicated tutorial on how to do that so let me go back now to the script processor and talk a little bit about the event handlers now every object has an on time on deposit and on remove event handler and then following it are any number of event handlers that are intrinsic to this particular object now most of the event handlers are only called when an application is running that is after you hit the play button up here um, with the exception of the on deposit and on remove event handlers they are called whenever the object is first being dropped into a register and when it's being removed from a register and this basically happens when you hit the reset button up here now these event handlers especially on the deposit event handlers are quite useful if you're trying to you know map buffers initialize buffers to do the type of things that you only do once in an application now the the only other exception are the on pre-render and on post-render event handlers which this particular slider doesn't have them but some of the objects do have these event handlers and they're also called even when the application is not running and we'll see some examples of that in different tutorials but for the most part the event handlers are only called uh, after you have started the application so let's have a look now at the, uh, um, this register up here. And you can see here where the slider sits. It shows you the name of the object, uh, the icon, and there's a, there's a, a black uh, vertical bar right here. And this one basically indicates that one of the event handlers down here has been implemented. And that's shown here on both faces in the list. If I was to implement another event handler, compile the change, you would see another black bar up here, indicating that two event handlers are implemented. Also, when you change a script, um, the, the text here becomes red, meaning that this, this event handler has not yet been compiled. So what you need to do is hit Control Q. In this case, it had an error, and the error message appears down here. You, double, you click on the error, it takes you straight to where the error has occurred, but the event handler is still red, in this case indicating that it has an error. So in either case, it hasn't been compiled. So if I now remove this, hit control Q, the event handles are black again. So another thing you can do with an object from the tree view, you can add it into the script processor multiple times into different registers. And now the event handlers, let's for example say the on move event handler, will now be invoked for each instance that you have added in here. So you can basically implement three different on and move event handlers. Now what's important to note here is that the order in which the event handlers are invoked is from uh, left to right, top to bottom. So this means that the on move event handler in this register is called first, then here, and then here. Now another thing you can do is you can take different objects and drop them into the same register. So for example, if I add another slider right here and drag and drop it over top of this one, both sliders now sit in this register. And this is kind of shown here by the dot, dot, dot that indicates that there's more than one object in there. And basically what this means is that the same event handler will now be called for each of these objects. And this makes a, a lot of sense sometimes, for example, when you deal with toolbars that have many buttons. And you would like to have um, the same event handler to be called for every button, then you can do something like this. Another thing to note here is that when an object uh, sits in a register, this is indicated here um, using boldface font in the tree view. And actually when you double click on a node, it tries to focus you on the register where it's located. Of course, if it's, uh, if it's in the, the script processors multiple times, then it'll simply show you the first one it finds. So if you'd like to remove an object from a register, all you have to do is click on the register, do a right mouse click, and then hit remove. Um, now keep in mind if you do that, you're going to lose all the scripts. Another thing you can do is you can move entire registers around. And you do that by hitting the control key and then selecting the object, moving it and dropping it into a different register. Now you have moved the object, including all of the event handlers to this, this register. Uh, this makes, in some instances, this makes uh, sense if you'd like to arrange 
the registers up here and try to group objects, related objects together. So now if one script processor isn't enough for you, if you've used up all the registers, you can go into the tree view and you can add another script processor under the scripts tab using a mouse click and we'll just insert another script processor and it will then appear down here as an additional tab. And you can go to a tree view and hit F2 and you can, you can rename this one. Now, after you've done this, you, you can now toggle between the processors and of course you can arbitrarily drag and drop objects into the second script processor as well. So now I'd like to talk about the scoping rules in OpenCL Studio here. Uh, there's basically three different scopes. There is the individual event handler, and we have already seen this. So within each event handler, you can declare local variables and functions, and you can use them within that handler. And then there is also the processor global scope. And you can see this down here under the processor tab. Now here you can implement a script that contains functions and variables that are accessible to all the scripts within this given particular processor. Now this processor global script is only executed once when the processor is first being created. And then there's the application global scope where you can declare functions and variables that are accessible in all the scripts and all the event handlers. And this one is called uh, when an application is first instantiated. So even before the objects are loaded into the tree view. So let me illustrate this. So I'm now down here in the application global script. And here I'm going to declare a variable, let's call it app global. And let's say it equals string 12. And now if I com compile the script and execute it, I can now go up here to an event handler, let's say to this one, which is in the uh, second script processor. And I can now go underscore G to access the global scope, and then hit dot. And you can see here a number of functions. The global scope contains a number of uh, intrinsic Lua functions. And if I go over to the members, you can see my variable up global right here. And when I click on it, I can now use it or assign a value to it. Similarly, if I go to the first script processor and hit underscore G, up global is also available here. However, if I now go to the processor global tab, let's this time Im uh, implement a function here. Let's call it up uh, proc global. It's just an empty function. And now I'm going to compile this script. We're now in the processor global scope of main. And I can simply go underscore p dot. And here you can see the function proc global. I can call it. But if I go to the second processor, as you'd expect, if I hit underscore p dot, the code completion window doesn't even uh, pop up because the processor scope is completely empty. So the different scopes here, I'll give you a mechanism to structure more complex applications. The one thing to note here is that the application global script here, this space, is uh, called at the very beginning when an application is, is, is first loaded. It's even called before the objects in the tree view are instantiated. And this means that you can declare variables here, let's say account, which you can then use inside these uh, nodes up here. So for example, I've declared a variable called count. And if I now go up here to the OpenCL subtree and let's suppose I insert a buffer and then go to the property sheets of that buffer, I can now, in the dimensions here, I can use this variable. And when you hit reset, the buffer will have the size that you have initialized right here. So the last thing I'd like to mention here is uh, that the script processors, there are also objects in the tree view, and it means that you can also drag and drop them into a register and that they also generate events and they have an API. And the most important events, or the only events here, are on activate or on deactivate. And basically what this means, every script process has a function called setActive. And this allows you to activate or deactivate entire script processors, which means that none of the registers inside that 
processor will receive uh, any of the events if it's deactivated. Uh, basically, this allows you to structure larger programs for different views of the application is, uh, are implemented in different script processors. So you can basically save some performance by, by deactivating entire processors. So this sums up the tutorial on the scripting interface. Of course, like any editing environment, there are global search and replace functions. So for example, if you copy up global and paste it into this field up here, then press this button, you've just performed a global search. And if you look at the output pane, it shows you all the instances where up global occurs. And if you click on an instance, it takes you straight to the script. It indicates the line for you. Uh, similarly, you can also use uh, a global replace function, which uh, I would use uh, wisely because OpenCL Studio has no undo functions. Um, instead of hitting the buttons up here, you can also use the, uh, uh, the text here. Simply just select a text and hit Control F or hit Control H, just like you used to it from a editing environment. So now that you have seen the scripting tutorial, you're ready to go uh, through the other tutorials that cover uh, different aspects of the IDE.